from the old tattered flag and today I'm coming to you from my home office and I wanted to talk to you about a different way to use your ultra punch needle. If any of you follow us on Facebook you might have remembered I talked about um, and actually showed an example of embroidery using your ultra punch. A couple years ago I was approached by a woman who asked me if the ultra punch needle would work for bunka embroidery. I couldn't answer her honestly I had no idea what it was. So I went to Google and I looked it up and I thought, hmm, it looks like they're using a punch tool. We have a punch tool. Um, it looks like a different type of thread and fabric. And so I was excited at this new prospect of finding a different way to use the ultra punch needle. Um, the style of the embroidery was originated in Japan, so it wasn't exactly my style, but I knew that if I could figure out this technique, I could figure out a way to make it work with the punch needle and tweak it to maybe a more primitive style. It did not happen overnight, I'll tell you that. Two years later, I've really just kind of feeling like I'm kind of getting a grasp on it. Although I have to be honest with you, I'm not a stitcher at all. Um, I've dabbled a little bit in cross stitch and other forms of embroidery but really nothing serious, nothing like needlepoint or anything like that. I don't know the proper stitches. I just know that if I have a needle and thread, I can try and it may not always come out perfect that first time, but we can get there with practice. So when I first started learning about Bunka embroidery, I learned that they used a, a different type of thread. It's basically a, um, like a polyester type thread. And it, excuse me, let me get my scissors here. It took me a long time to find the threads, but I finally did come across. And the threads are different than what we're normally used to. They're different than like a Valdani or a DMC. It's, I'm just gonna show you this from afar and then I'll show you closer. Um, it's a stretchy type of thread and when you cut your different strands of thread, you actually pull it so that it kind of forms, I want to say like ringlets or curls. And so when I first heard about this type of embroidery, I thought, well, it must be the thread and those little curls that hold in the fabric. So I tried the thread and it wasn't working for me. I was still having a hard time getting my stitches to stay in. So I thought, well, okay, what kind of fabric are they using? found out that they were using a polyester gabardine. So I immediately went online, <laughs> ordered a bunch. I got it and I thought, mm, that's not really um, for me. It has kind of like a shiny feel to it. I really didn't care for it and I found that it wasn't holding my stitches. And so I really was kind of back to the drawing board with it. And I thought, that was thunder. I thought, um, <clears throat> why isn't it holding my stitches? What am I doing wrong? So it occurred to me that I actually had a Bunka embroidery um, needle and I thought, okay, it must be the needle depth. So I actually took the needle out and I compared it to my punch needle and I found that the depth of the Bunka embroidery needle was ideally set to like maybe a four or six on the ultra punch needle. So I thought, okay, that must be it. And lo and behold, I don't know why this thought didn't come to me before, but it started working. Now that wasn't to say that it came out perfect perfect every time. You know what they say, practice makes perfect. And I did um, try it many, many times with different types of threads. And I think I finally feel comfortable showing you this type of embroidery. So I'm gonna bring you in a little bit closer and I'll show you how to do this. Okay, so we're back. I told you that I would show you a close up of this the fabric, both the fabric and the thread recommended um, for Bunka embroidery. I'm sorry, this is my first time doing this by myself, so please bear with me. Um, so, <clears throat> as you can tell, it's like a very, very shiny and very kind of a slinky thread. It's, um, it's just not really my style. I'm more comfortable with a DMC, a Valdani, a hand-dyed um, type floss that might have a more primitive look to it. That said, I would have used it if I thought that it worked well for me and I could per perfect the technique, but I didn't. So, and this is the fabric right here. You can see it's polyester, has a sheen to it, which I'm not really crazy about. So I did not use these materials. I went back to my trusty weaver's cloth. 
Let me back up a little bit. Okay. So as most of you know, when you're doing punch needle, this is not the embroidery I'm talking about. This is the original style of punch needle. You work your design from the back and you punch into it and your loops come out the front right here. With this style of embroidery, we're gonna be working from the very top. Now, the first time I tried it, I wanted to embroider and don't be horrified, but you can see right here, I had finally gotten the feeling of punching with the needle and getting the embroidery stitches. But like I said, I'm not a stitcher, so I wasn't getting the right look, maybe the right, um, right here it wasn't too bad with the leaf. You can see right here, um, it was going, I was stitching in the center to try to get the vein of the leaf and I was getting the look I wanted to, wanted. I wasn't happy right here with my stem though. Looked like a chain stitch almost wasn't happy with the petals. So this was my first try and when I was finally satisfied that I finally had it and was getting the feel of it. Then I started and I just, one night I just sat and I said, okay, I'm gonna do this. And lo and behold, it started to take shape. All of these threads are Valdani. So you can see right here how the variegated threads give you a nice, um, it's almost a spotty look, which I, again, I wasn't really totally crazy about. I like it here in the stem, in the leaf. I like that variegation, but for my beehive, I, I wasn't wild about it. But anyway, that's neither here or there. It was just to kind of experiment. And I'm, I'm very thrilled with this, considering it was the first time I sat down and said, okay, we're going to do this. And I basically what I did, I knew that I could not go more than a half inch. So I just started punching and pulling the thread. You'll see, we're going to get there. Anyway, so this was my first real try once I felt like I had the stitches. Then I knew I was going to show you this video. So I said, well, I'm just going to make a word. I'm going to put a word on some fabric and I'm going to keep the width of the letters no more than a half inch. So I just really printed this out on computer paper and transferred it to the weaver's cloth. And as you can tell, I think by this time, I'm finally starting to get it. This thread right here is my own hand dyed thread that we sell at theoldtatteredflag.com. Have to put a little plug in. But I really like the look that this gives because it doesn't give you a whole splotchy like section. It just is more spotty, so it gives you that nice variegation I was looking for. So now that I've said this, we're going to actually, I'm actually going to show you how to do this. So I have three needles threaded. My first needle is threaded with just a regular DMC style of thread. I have it threaded in my ultra punch needle and I'm using the medium tip. Now, when I said that I <clears throat> had a bunka embroidery needle. I don't want you to think I'm crazy. The reason I didn't use it was because it was defective. It did not, I think that there was a piece of plastic um, impeding me from threading the needle. So I wasn't able to use it. So that's why I had to kind of figure out how the ultra punch needle was gonna work. So I had to kind of compare the needle, the two needles together. And what I found was that it matched the, the setting of the ultra punch needle on a six. Now, the first time I did this with the beehive, I was not comfortable because you're gonna punch in the fabric and when you're punching and you're pulling over, you want to pull that stitch over and you need to know that your thread is going to not pull out. So that's why I'm saying you're setting it at, the, at a deeper needle height because what you wanna do is you wanna punch down, then your fingers are underneath. And when I say this, I'm using a rug hooking frame. We'll talk about that in a minute. You know what? I'm going to start over here. Let's get me a one inch tail again. So I'm starting over here and I'm going to pull this down because we want this on the other side. And then what I'm going to do, let me just make sure that you can see, I'm going to pull you a little bit closer. Sorry about that shadow. What we're going to do is we're going to just go back and forth. Now I'm a right-hander, so I'm going from right to left. And so essentially what is going to be underneath is 
my big loops. Now, having dabbled in cross stitch just a little bit, I knew that, and, and with punch needle also, we like our backs to be as neat as our fronts. This does not happen with this craft. You're gonna have loops on the back. It's also gonna cause you to use a little bit more thread, but it's, it's a cost that I'm willing to um, do because I just love the look so much. And, and for me, who is not a stitcher, I just love that this technique allows me to get those beautiful stitches with my punch needle. I'm gonna stop and I'm gonna pull this up and I'm going to snip it. Then I'm gonna reach my hand underneath and grab that loop so that it comes down. Come on. Okay, so as you can see, those are nice, beautiful stitches that I've just made with my punch needle. Now, what does it look like on the back? A hot mess. <laughs> this is the stigma that we as punchers or cross stitchers or even stitchers have to, um, oh, I should move it into frame there. We have to get over this. This is what you're gonna have. So it is causing you to use a little bit more thread, but again, you have beautiful long stitches on the front. Um, what they recommend for setting this is to dab a little bit of glue on your loops. I'm not totally wild about glue, so I was thinking that I would rather try like a fusible material, put it on and iron it so that it fuses those loops to the material. I don't know, these are things I still need to try. So I wanted to show you that I did the smaller right here, smaller section. Now I'm gonna talk a little bit about my frame. I'm using my rug hooking frame because it allows me to have a larger depth where I could stick my hand underneath to grab those loops. If I was using my punch needle frame, it would not allow me the space to get my hand underneath. All right, so I'm gonna move that back there. I'm going to now use Valdani. That first one was, like I said, a DMC style of thread. Now we're using Valdani. I'm gonna give myself a one inch tail and I'm going to give myself some extra thread because again you know with same with punch needle you don't want any um, tension on your thread I'm gonna tighten my material and I want to make sure I'm at the right height I'm at a number six the Valdani is a little bit thinner so when you're punching punching and stitching you're going to be going a little bit closer. I'm gonna put my hand underneath, make sure you can see me. Okay. There we go. I got my loop. Sorry, this is a different needle and it seems to be a little bit sharper. Must be a brandy new one. But as you can tell, it works lovely with the Valdani floss also. Now you can see that that loop up there was a little bit high. I could pull it out and go back and fix it if I wanted to. I'm just gonna keep going so you can see how it's going. So punch and stitch, punch and stitch. And I'll show you how the Valdani looks. You see I have a little bit of a space right there. Now what can you do with this? That's the real um, fun part for me as a pattern designer. This is gonna open up a whole new world for designs. It's gonna cause me to really think about it too. You could punch a flower the regular way with your ultra punch needle so that your loops come out underneath. So you could punch the entire flower, then you could turn it over, draw your stem and leaves, and use the punch and stitch method. And yes, I am gonna call it punch and stitch. I'm trying to get this tail down as I'm talking to you. 
you could punch a portion of, of your design and then stitch the other portion. This one's being a little bit difficult. There we go. <clears throat> For my third row, I wanted to show you, um, and, and this may fail, I wanted to thread my needle with some a very thin yarn. So this would be a like a fingering style yarn. Please forgive me, I'm playing with my other needles here. So as you know, you can use a fingering style yarn, which is the very thin yarn, with your medium tip. I mean, excuse me, your large tip. So I have my large needle tip in. I'm gonna set it at a six, and this could be a fail. So we're experimenting with this together. I feel good about it, but you just never know because the, the thing is the large tip is gonna make a bigger hole. I'll make sure you can see. <laughs> I apologize. My tripod's not cooperating. So the large tip's gonna make a bigger hole, um, which worries me. Is it going to hold the thread in? Bigger pop since you're using a bigger needle. And we have success. Just make sure that you're seeing this okay. I have to tell you, I really like the looks of the yarn. Remember though, this, the ultra punch needle is not meant for most yarns, only a very, very thin fingering or, or uh, sock yarn. Some sock yarns do not work. Make sure it's on the thinner side. And that goes for punching the regular way too. I'm going to stop and bring you up close so you can see how nice that is. Look how plush that is. Very, very nice. So we just did an experiment together. I honestly was a little nervous because I didn't know how that was gonna work out and it worked fine. Pull my little tail down. Now we had a, we had a loop pull up there. Interesting. Okay, so now just Bear with me a little bit more. We're going to try one of the leaves. I'm gonna go back to my, my green thread come on, came unthreaded, so we'll use the blue. We'll do a blue leaf. Now again, I mentioned that I'm not a stitcher, so it's kind of fun to learn the new ways to do the stitching that might be a little bit high. The thing with bunka or punch and stitch is that you don't want your stitches to be more than a half inch because if you do, they're gonna pull out. Get my loop, my thread down. Okay, so what you're gonna do when you're doing a leaf is you're gonna stagger it. So I'm not gonna go all the way down. Make sure you're seeing it, yep. I'm gonna keep going to the outside, into the center. Outside, into the center. I'm gonna turn my frame a little bit and move you so you can see me. Okay, and I really apologize for the shadows. lovely. I really can't tell you how relaxing this is. And you know what? There are no rules. If I was to go like off center, there's no stitching police. I should tell you that everybody's home today. It's Sunday. So you never know what noises you're going to hear in the house. Could be Baxter coming in to say hello to me. Baxter's my dog. Could be one of the cats coming in requesting to be 
fed, or it could be my husband getting a snack. You did. I did. <laughs> it was him coming to get a snack. <laughs> so I just want to show you, we've done half of the leaf right there and see how nice and plush it is right there. I'm now moving my frame around and I should tell you that we're using our spinner frames. Oh boy, I apologize. Okay. This does not feel right to me, so I'm going to spin it back down. And there we go. I'm going to go and do the other side. Let's turn my frame, keep you with me. You can see that I have one loose thread there. That's not a big deal. Um, the whole loop, loop is not coming out, the whole stitch is not coming out. I'm not sure why it does that. Perhaps someone that is a professional at Bunka can tell me. I don't get really super upset about it. I just trim it away later. I was just checking in on you to see if you could see me. Like I said, this is the first time of making a video myself. So I'm going to snip my threads. And I'm going to trim this one. Because it really is kind of bugging me. And I'm going to pull the tail down. And I think you can see how beautiful that leaf is. So I encourage you to give this a try because it really is fun. It's a little bit intimidating, but you just really have to kind of put your mind to it. And this pattern will be available uh, very shortly on the oldtatteredflag.com. We're going to call this Method Punch and Stitch. And I look forward to bringing you lots more designs and a lot more demo videos showing you how I learn the stitches as we go. But in the meantime, experiment with it. It's really fun. Set your needle at a height of number six and go. And I thank you for watching and thank you for being patient with me. And we'll see you soon.